Hello, Gemini, Gemini Rising, and Gemini Moon people. This is your weekly astrological and card horoscope for the week starting April 23rd, 2018. Uh, quick update for everybody, I'm going to be going on holiday the 29th through the 5th. So the 29th of April, actually I'm leaving the 28th. So the 28th of April through the 5th of May, I will not um, actually be doing appointments or downloadable video files. Downloadable video files that are ordered during that time will be placed on a list and processed in the order they are received. Of course, that has nothing to do with this coming week, but it is something I want to just give everyone a heads up about so you can, you know, do your thing this week because I won't be around the following week. But then I'll come right back and I'll have horoscopes and everything too. Oh, it's okay. So what is going on when it comes to your astrology this week? Well, on Tuesday, we've got Mars in Capricorn. That's your eighth house of shared resources, passive income, and intimacy, forming a gorgeous sextile to Jupiter, currently retrograde in your sixth house of work, your reputation, your schedule, um, as well as productivity. And there seems to be some kind of easy extra cash flow being put on the table for you. With Mars in the 8th, this could be something brought to you through a friend, somebody trusted, somebody close. Remember, Mars is kind of like our platonic support system, but Mars is the shallow platonic support the system. These are the tight support system, okay? It's like we're either a BFF or just one tier below BFF, uh, or it doesn't matter with Mars. Mars isn't, you know, a socialite. And with Mars sextile to Jupiter, there could be actually somebody either through work or possibly, you know, just somebody in your immediate social circle that's going to be prevent presenting, not preventing, presenting this opportunity to you. They may be already involved in working in it, or you may actually be finding out that they're just working on being a good link with something that could most likely be a sure thing. On Thursday, we've got Mars conjunct Pluto in your eighth house, and this can be a gorgeous aspect for destroying um, an enemy or overcoming a major obstacle when it comes to your shared resources, passive income, uh, your self-employment income, loans and debts. However, this is also an area that governs intimacy, so we're going to be talking a couple of about a couple of things there. Now, again, Mars conjunct Pluto, this is the end. You know, this could be the end of maybe a financial fight or a financial battle that you are in. And this could actually be something that you win quite strong. You, you, you come out, you know, the victor. Just be careful of overkill with Mars conjunct Pluto because, again, that can really, you know, bitter the taste of victory in this area. We don't want to be burning bridges when it comes to this. You could be getting money back that is owed to you because Pluto is retrograde. You could be, you know, um, crushing maybe some kind of institution, maybe a bank or a credit agency. Uh, that has been really giving you the runaround. And this is also an opportunity, again, for you to even, you know, gain some kind of uh, payback or even compensation for the troubles that have been caused to you. However, this can also indicate an intimacy angle. But with, Ven with Mars conjunct Pluto, we are definitely getting more into the carnal and it's less emotional. This could be a very hot time for a lot of Geminis and their partners, especially when it comes to really kind of getting away from boundaries, you know, and actually exploring a different type of vulnerability with our partner. But with Mars conjunct Pluto, it's important to understand that this is kind of more of an experimental event uh, that you might be, you know, this might not be on Thursday, it might just be sort of a talk that we have and we do it later. Um, this is something that can actually be very spicy for our relationship, but there is sort of, I guess you could say, uh, one of those energies about it that can create sort of this um, no going back kind of feeling. So make sure everyone's on the same page, whatever happens. So what's going on with your cards? Well, when it comes to your cards, what well, we've got the, uh, for your Earth sector, when it comes to your work and finances, we've got the Sun. And the Sun, of course, one of the, you know, one of the sweeter, happier cards in the decks, one of the ones that's practically immune to any kind of negativity. You can't even reverse it. Well, you can, but it doesn't really do much. And with the Sun card upright, we are talking about, again, a major financial win coming your way and peace being restored. Um, you know, the Sun can talk about res restoration in terms of, you know, restored credit, restored innocence, restored health, uh, and also just an opportunity to, again, maybe, act, you know, have a clean slate to work on where things are much sweeter, you know. And in this case, when we talk about this, this could be something, you know, patching up at work. 
maybe a period of strife, a period of anxiety or, you know, agrimony, you know, finally actually dissipating and going away, peace being made in relationships with work, but also at the same time a sweet, easy victory getting into a new job where that environment is just, it's, it's more like a playroom, it's more like hanging out, it's more like just going with your friends to the, you know, to, to, a, to a party. It's not necessarily even a whole lot of hard work. I like the sun is for money as well because again we talk about smoothing out rough patches and so even if you don't think there are some patches that can be smoothed we are lightening the load uh, on you this week so I mean all in all everything is turning out to be very nice for you this week honestly and I've just realized I skipped the spiritual advice cards so we'll just have to do that at the end. For your communications with air, when it comes to your friends, your relatives, and the others in your life, we do have the Nine of Pentacles reversed. And the Nine of Pentacles reversed can indicate that while things may be going all right for you, um, the Nine of Pentacles reversed can indicate some issues going on with a friend or a relative, especially regarding um, either possibly a, a needy or codependent attitude or habit he or she has coming up again. And with the Nine of Pentacles reversed, it's something that they probably do need to solve or fix alone that they really don't necessarily want to do. The Nine of Pentacles reversed can indicate that this could be, you know, again, asking for funds or financial support, or perhaps simply asking for moral support for something that you feel maybe, you know, you, you have an intrinsic issue with. You know, this may be, you know, this person going down the rabbit hole, they always go down. And with the Nine of Pentacles reversed, you know, it's okay to stay neutral. You don't have to give a flat out yes or no. Um, you may feel like you need to save this person from him or herself. I don't know if that's going to work anyway. If you want to keep a relationship at least peaceable between your friend and your relative and you, um, you don't necessarily have to go that far just yet. But if you do want to remind them that we've been here before, that might be something to do. You don't have to say yes either. For your challenge this week with fire, we do have the Four of Pentacles upright. Um, be careful about cutting oneself off a bit too much this week. The Four of Pentacles can indicate a need to protect ourselves or sometimes, again, going way too far. And with the Four of Pentacles as a challenge, it can indicate, Gemini, that we may be kind of getting into a space where we're not able to tell friend from foe very much. Um, and that happens, because again, when we get really anxious, we're highly suggestible. Um, just look how easy the world's manipulated nowadays. Um, we get, but, but when we say highly suggestible, it's not always about manipulation. We can, we can be, you know, highly suggestible by our minds, by our associations. And, you know, when we get really anxious, we get really stressed out, the Four of Pentacles shows up and we get overprotective. Overprotective of ourselves, uh, our families, overprotective of certain friends. And with the Four of Pentacles, you may be feeling like, okay, um, I'm going to cut us all off from this dangerous situation so that we can all be safe. Might not be a good idea. You might not have to solve the issue, you may not have to get involved, but you can't make that decision for everyone else. And be careful about accidentally cutting other people off from things that are not necessarily as bad for them as they might be for you this week. Again, your intentions may be pure, but accidents happen. For your emotions with water and your romantic life, we've got the world upright. Beautiful card for love and romance. Looks like a very sweet week for the Gemini people. Um, this card can indicate an evolution uh, for everybody, no matter what aspect of your relationship it is. And I try to make these, these readings cover a little bit of everything, just in case, you know, a person's got a certain situation. Like, I'm, I'm single, I love life, and I'm not looking, so <laughs> it's like, love life, what am I going to talk about? But some people don't get that, you know. Um, the World Card Upright is, is all about an evolution, though, okay? Those of you looking for love, the World Card Upright can indicate um, new love coming to you, absolutely. But with the World Card, this is something a bit more special because there is something about this where the end game, I guess you could say, in this person's priority list, this person's ideals, is the same as yours. Uh, this is not necessarily something that we have to kind of figure out. Usually with the World Card Upright, it's also about two complete people coming together, a complete person meeting a complete person, not, I have a void to fill and a hole in my heart. You know, this is kind of like a world where this person's end game plan is your end game plan. You may be feeling like maybe you've not been meeting a lot of people who have end game plans, you know, who know what they want to, you know, who know what their ideal living situation, family situation, romantic situation looks like. 
And that's not for everybody. Let me qualify that right now. Again, trying to, trying to please everybody, I should stop. That's not for everybody. But at the same time, you know, if that is your end game, then you will be meeting somebody who has a similar priority with an end game in mind, which may be easier to bond together. For those of you who are currently coupled, the world card upright indicates an evolution or an uptick or an upgrade in the quality of life around this relationship. Um, and this can be a huge success brought on by, um, you know, possibly a big change at your partner's job, your job, we already see good stuff on your job, uh, that actually changes the, the monetary or physical quality of life for our relationship, sure, but also allows us to consider going on to the next level. You know, if we're, if we're dating, are we going to become more committed? If we're committed, are we going to move in? If we're moved in, are we going to get married? Are we married? Are we going to have kids? This is where, again, everything kind of rolls up on the wheel, so to speak. And so it's a very, very interesting turn of events. Unfortunately, you know, again, the World card is one of those cards. It's not a minor arcana. It's definitely more era-oriented as opposed to situation-oriented. So we'll have to see how that happens for you. And since we forgot to do that first, we're going to do that last here with the Spiritual Advice card of the week for the Geminis. And appropriately enough, we have got the Seder. And the prompt reads, revelry and indulgence. This is definitely meant to be a week where you do, in, you know, get to enjoy a little bit of frivolity. You know, a lot of things going on in the astrology and in these cards are talking about you bringing some much needed lightheartedness, exploration, as well as more of a devil may care attitude kind of uh, approach to things. You know, the, the satyr can talk about a need to understand that not everything needs to be injected with a lot of emotional and psychological currency all the time. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to live in like a shallow, superficial bubble. Absolutely not. That brings a different kind of broken. But what we look at here is that we might need, with the Seder card, you know, a, a little bit of a need to kind of see where uh, there's more risk-taking activity for you. There's more opportunities in being able to take on a much more, I guess you could say, fleet-footed uh, type of approach to life, as opposed to being so plodding and so careful. One of the things that can kind of happen, I think, that with us, you know, is that we are kind of afraid to let things be one-offs. We're afraid to let things be one-off adventures. We're afraid to let things be um, adventures in and of themselves. They've always got to serve this higher purpose and do these other things, and there has to be a ripple effect. Well, the thing is, is that with this card, we kind of also put on notice, you know, some things can just be for fun. They don't have to accomplish a goal. You know, we don't have to have every intention and every part of our life interwoven together. In fact, I do a lot of readings with people where I'm kind of like, okay, everything is hinging on everything else, you know, and it's, sometimes it's important to break up that cluster a little bit. And so allowing some things to be separate, even be a bit frivolous this week, is going to make all the difference in the world in changing your approach to that. So that is your horoscope. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you ever want to get a session, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.